Hey friends, welcome to the YouTube channel All About Electronics. So in this question, we have been given this circuit and we have been given that the switch S is in the closed condition since a long time and at time t is equal to 0, this switch has been opened and after that it remains in the same condition. So here we have been asked to find the steady state magnitude of the voltage across the capacitor. So here we have been also given the condition for the diode. That means the diode has a zero reverse current and the forward voltage drop across the diode is also equal to zero. So now let us find the voltage across the capacitor in the steady state condition. So here we have been given that before the time t is equal to zero, this switch is in the closed condition and it is in this condition since a long time. So we can say that in this condition, the circuit is already in the steady state condition. So we know that in the steady state condition, the inductor will act as a short circuit. And here initially, there is a no charge across the capacitor. So in this condition, if you see, then the diode will also remain in the reverse bias condition. And because of that, it will act as a open circuit. So in this condition, or at time t is equal to zero minus, let us find the current through the inductor. So let's say that current is equal to I L zero minus. So this I L zero minus can be given as 10 volt divided by one ohm or that is equal to 10 ampere. So we can say that at time t is equal to zero minus the current through the inductor is equal to 10 ampere. That means once the switch is open, then at time t is equal to zero plus also the same current will flow through the inductor. Because as you know, the inductor opposes the instantaneous change in the current. So now, at time t is equal to 0 plus, this switch will get opened. So now we will have this remaining circuit. So for the given circuit, now let us find the steady state voltage across the capacitor. So to find that, we can apply the KVL in the given loop and we can find the voltage across the capacitor. So now suppose if we apply the KVL in this loop, then we will get the differential equation. And by solving the differential equation, we can get the voltage across the capacitor. Or the second and the easiest way is we can represent this circuit in the S domain and using the Laplace transform we can easily find the voltage across the capacitor. So here we will use the second method. So first of all let us find the equivalent S domain circuit for the given circuit. So here we know that the initial current through the inductor or this IL0 minus is equal to 10 ampere. So in the earlier videos of the Laplace transform, we have seen that if I0 is the initial current through the inductor, then in the equivalent S domain, it can be represented like this. So here, this L is equal to 1 millihenry. So we can say that this LS is equal to 0 0.001 times S, or we can say that that is equal to S divided by 1000. And we know that this IL0 minus is equal to 10 ampere. So we can say that this I0 divided by S will be equal to 10 divided by S. So this will be the equivalent S domain representation for the inductor. Similarly, if you see the capacitor, then there is a no initial charge across the capacitor. So in the equivalent S domain, it can be represented as 1 divided by Cs. And here the value of C is equal to 10 microfarad. So we can say that that is equal to 1 divided by 10 to the power minus 5 times s or we can say that that is equal to 10 to the power 5 divided by s. So this will be the equivalent s domain representation for the capacitor. Now in this loop, when the current will flow in this anti-clockwise direction, then this diode will get forward biased and in the forward bias condition, it will act as a short circuit. That means in the equivalent s domain representation, this diode can be represented as the short circuit. That means for the given circuit, if we see the equivalent S domain circuit, then this is how it will look like. So now in this circuit, by applying the KCL, we can easily find the voltage across the capacitor. So let's say the voltage at this node is equal to Vx. So applying the KCL at this node, we can say that this Vx divided by this S divided by 1000, that is this current plus 10 divided by S, that is this current source, plus Vx divided by 
this 10 to the power 5 divided by s that is this current should be equal to 0. So if we further simplify it then we can say that this 1000 times Vx divided by s plus 10 divided by s plus s times Vx divided by 10 to the power 5 is equal to 0. Or we can say that this Vx times this 1000 divided by s plus s divided by 10 to the power 5 that is equal to minus 10 divided by s. So now if we multiply both sides by this 10 to the power 5 times s then further we can write this expression as this Vx times this 10 to the power 8 plus s square that is equal to minus 10 divided by s times 10 to the power 5 times s. Or we can say that this Vx is equal to minus 10 to the power 6 divided by s square plus 10 to the power 8. So this will be the expression of the Vx. Now if you notice over here then the polarity of the Vc is exactly opposite to the Vx. So we can say that this Vc is equal to minus Vx and that is equal to 10 to the power 6 divided by this s square plus 10 to the power 8. So in this way we got the S domain expression for the voltage across the capacitor. That means this Vc is equal to 10 to the power 6 divided by this s square plus 10 to the power 8. Or further we can write it as 100 times 10 to the power 4 divided by s square plus this 10 to the power 4 whole square. Now if you are aware then the Laplace transform of the sine omega t is equal to omega divided by this s square plus omega square. So if we compare this expression with that expression then we can say that over here this omega is equal to 10 to the power 4. That means if we take the inverse Laplace transform of this term then we will get this Vc of t that is equal to 100 times sine of 10 to the power 4 times t. That means this is the time domain expression for the voltage across the capacitor. So if we just consider the magnitude that is the magnitude of this Vc of t then that is equal to 100 volt. So we can say that in the steady state condition the magnitude of the capacitor voltage is equal to 100 volt. And therefore we can say that for the given question the answer is equal to 100 volt.